Hello and welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you are watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some breaking news coming out here for you. So just last night, Ukraine came under massive missile and drone attacks once again fired from Russia targeting uh, Ukraine's energy sector once again. And we have this Trapilia power plant. It's a thermal power plant a major one, I should add, uh, just south of Kiev, and it was struck by missiles and drones and completely destroyed. Okay, the energy company, it's called Centrenergo, I believe, uh, they said it was completely destroyed and inoperable. Okay, and it's going to take them a long time to repair this thing and replace all the parts that have been destroyed. Apparently, they will be able to uh, fix it, but I'm sure it's going to take some time, okay? And We've had uh, multiple energy companies coming out in Ukraine and reporting that they need air defenses to protect these facilities because they can't just keep repairing them all the time, okay? And it's going to take months, if not years, to repair and get these things back up in working order again. So we've got like 200,000 people that have been uh, uh, basically in the dark without electricity due to this attack. And uh, many people inside of, of Kiev as well are affected by this. So this was a major attack once again. And uh, I've got lots of information to go over. So I want to go ahead and get right into this. Uh, first, I want to show you... Let's show you on a map where this uh, this power uh, thermal power plant is located, okay? So it's kind of in the center of Ukraine here, just south of Kiev. So this is the plant here, very close to Kiev, and uh, many people, again, in this in this region were affected by this power plant. And it's one of uh, one of Ukraine's most major power plants that's used, okay? So this definitely affected lots and lots of people, and it's going to put even more strain on Ukraine's uh, energy sector here, okay? So they've been calling for air defenses for quite some time now. And I'll tell you right now, Ukraine is very, very low on air defenses, even more than what I've reported before, okay? I've been saying this for a long time, that uh, Ukraine is very low on air defense, but it's even worse now, okay? Much, much worse now. We're going to go over some information that, that talks about that. But first, I've got an article with lots of information regarding this strike. We'll also show you um, some video with sound um, showing this place on fire. But let's get right into this on the BBC. Key power plant near Kiev destroyed by Russian strikes. Just coming out two hours ago. A major power plant near Kiev was completely destroyed by Russian strikes early on Thursday, energy company Centronergo said. A Trapilia power plant was the largest provider of electricity for three regions, including Kiev. The scale of destruction is terrifying, Centronergo chairman Andriy Hota said. Russia has long been deliberately and systematically de uh, targeting Ukraine's energy system. Mr. Hoda said that the BBC, or told the BBC, excuse me, that Thursday morning strikes destroyed the transformer, the turbines, the generators, they destroyed 100%. So basically this entire facility is completely offline. Okay, it wasn't just damaged, it was completely destroyed, guys. A fire broke out in the turbine workshop of the Trapilia plant located 50 kilometers or 31 miles to the south of Kiev, following Thursday's large-scale airborne attack. The Centronergo boss said that the plant was targeted by multiple missiles. Staff on shift were able to escape, he said, because they ran for cover as soon as the first drone hit. Residents were urged to shut their windows, charge all devices, and stock up on water. More than 80 missiles and drones targeted the sites across Ukraine in the early hours of Thursday, Many targeted energy infrastructure and almost a third made it through Ukraine's air defenses. I know it says about a third made it through, um, but I'm going to be showing you some more information that shows that uh, that number could be much higher than just a third, okay? It could have been half or more that made it through. Hours later, Centronergo confirmed his Trapilia plant has been put out of use. Mr. Hoda said his company's entire generative capacity in Ukraine was now destroyed. It was one of Ukraine's largest providers of electricity and heat. It operated two other pl uh, power plants, one in the Kharkiv region, which was destroyed late March, and one in the area of Donetsk region that was taken over by Russia in 2022. So Ukraine is definitely struggling now for energy. Okay, this is going to get worse and worse and worse for them. They've been calling for air defenses and Patriot missile systems. 
the uh, foreign minister of Ukraine was just at the NATO uh, meeting recently with uh, four other foreign ministers, and he was calling for air defenses, saying that's what they need more than anything. Yes, they need uh, you know missiles or drones or ammunition, but one of the main things they need is air defense, and if they don't have air defense, all of their critical infrastructure is going to continue to get destroyed here in these attacks. The Kharkiv and the Tripilia plants used to generate some 8% of the country's electricity, according to Mr. H uh, to Mr. Hota. The Tripilia thermal plant provided power to the three central regions of uh, Zitomir, Cher Cherkasy, and Kiev. The destruction of the Tripilia plant would not be a critical issue for Ukraine in the summer, he believed, although by winter it would become a giant problem. So by the end of the year, when it gets cold again, they're going to be lacking energy supplies. While the plant can be rebuilt with help from spare parts from Europe, he says it will uh, remain vulnerable to attack without Ukraine's allies providing powerful air defenses. We can repair, we can do the impossible, but we do need protection. So see, they can just keep repairing these over and over, which could take them months or a year or longer to repair, but then they'll just get destroyed again. They, in one night, it can literally be destroyed. So there's no point even repairing these when they're just going to continuously keep getting destroyed. At least two uh, two more thermal power plants suffered significant damage overnight in the west of Ukraine, placing even more strain on electricity supply nationwide. The DTEC power company was already down to 20% capacity after repeat attacks in March. Look at that, 20% capacity, guys. 80% of DTEC's power supply is completely demolished. The company told the BBC that the latest missile and drone attack, uh, strikes on these purely civilian power stations would make the task of providing critical power to the grid harder. Attack by attack, Russia is trying to strangle Ukraine's energy system and with it, our hard-won uh, freedom, DTEC said. The Kharkiv region in the northeast has been hit hard again after its power plant suffered major damage in late March. The mayor, uh, the mayor there described the situation as very difficult and announced more blackouts for households and businesses. For a time, uh, for a time on Thursday, the Kharkiv metro stopped running to save power. It has uh, since resumed, but the power supply is dipping and surging, so the trains are only working very intermittently. So look at how bad the power supply is just in the Kharkiv area, okay? And this is what I was talking about before. What's going to happen when Kharkiv cannot even maintain their power supply? It's a major city, guys. There's like, uh, I believe around, I don't know, 500,000 people or maybe more uh, that live there. It's a major city. And what's going to happen if uh, if they can no longer manage the power supply there? They're going to have to evacuate people and get them out of there. The Russian Defense Ministry said its forces had carried out massive strikes on oil, gas, and power energy facilities, which disrupted the work of Ukrainian military industry enterprises. In a separate development, four people died and several more were injured in the southern city of uh, Mykolaiv in a rare series of daytime strikes on Thursday. The Ukrainian Southern Military Command said on Telegram that private houses, cars, and industrial facilities were damaged in the insidious attacks. So lots of civilian infrastructure coming under attack, houses, uh, people's cars, and things like that getting destroyed. So Russia's keeping this thing up, okay? They're keeping the pressure on... Ukraine here and uh, I'm sure Ukraine is feeling it right now and they're not they're they're probably not feeling too good in regards to these attacks so it's definitely not looking good for them they're going to be in a tight spot and I just want to give you an update I checked again to see what's going on with this Ukraine aid bill and it's still held up in Congress and we're it's not going to be moving anytime soon okay it could be sitting for another week or two or longer and uh, we've also got some reports coming out from uh, generals of the U.S. military stating that Ukraine, uh, they're going to be in real big trouble here soon if they don't get some support in the next coming weeks, like in the next like two weeks. Okay, they're going to be like outgunned like 10 to 1. So it's getting worse and worse by the day for Ukraine. And uh, it's only going to continue to get worse as time goes on. So let me show you a few posts here on X. We're going to go over some extra information uh, that's off of mainstream media that people are reporting online. So let's take a look at this from Nexta. Uh, Trapilska t uh, thermal power plant has been completely destroyed by an overnight Russian strike. Interfax Ukraine reports citing uh, Centronergo. So let's look at this picture real quick. Here's a picture of this facility on fire, completely destroyed, as you can see, a huge blaze on the inside. And now we'll have a video that we'll go over, and uh, it's just uh, it's just showing the you know the footage of the 
fire here on this plant. So let's take a look at this too. Это пизда, просто вся электростанция гра. Это пизда, просто вся электростанция горит, продолжая взрываться. Это просто жесть. Только что был еще один прилет, я просто в ахере максимально. Это пизда. Сука, а там же же народу охуеть. Это просто пизда. Это пизда, просто вся электростанция. So as you can see, they're completely destroyed on fire. I mean, this has to be one of the worst hits on Ukrainian infrastructure here, especially their energy supply. Um, I haven't seen blazes like this from any other video, so this one was pretty massive. Uh, apparently, it was hit by drones and missiles at the same time. Multiple strikes here, and luckily, as far as we know, nobody was harmed in this attack. Uh, but again, completely destroyed, and it's a major thermal uh, power plant for Ukraine, okay? So let's take a look at some other information here. I've got a few other things to show you. All right, so this is another post from Nexta. It says, Ukraine has run out of missiles for Patriot and Iris-T and has exhausted most other air defense stocks. Build expert Julian, not sure how to uh, pronounce that, Ropuk, if I'm saying that right, probably butchering that. Uh, this while we have hundreds of systems and thousands of missiles in our depots, no words, just anger, Ropuk's, Ropuk added. This night, the Russians attacked Ukraine with a total of 42 missiles and 40 Shahid drones. The target was civil energy infrastructure facilities. Western countries cannot provide Ukraine with the necessary weapons for self-defense, but they will always find time to condemn Ukrainian attacks on Russian oil refineries just to keep gasoline prices unchanged. I'm going to show you a video regarding that in just a moment. Here's an approximate map of today's Russian attacks on Ukraine. Here's a picture showing uh, where these attacks were happening at. So uh, here's where that uh, thermal power plant was attacked. Uh, this was probably a strike near uh, Kharkiv on some other uh, infrastructure, probably energy as well. Looks like we had some down here near Zaporizhia. These were airstrikes, looks like, and drone attacks near there as well. And uh, these were drones also. So drones and missiles hitting that thermal power plant. And then look at all these uh, missiles coming on over here near Lviv targeting uh, more energy infrastructure, most likely over here. And also, um, I believe their oil facilities were coming under attack as well. So crazy. I mean, uh, they definitely don't have what is necessary to defend their country, which is air defense at the time. So here's an older post from uh, Julian Rapuk. It says here, as I said weeks ago, and almost no one believed me, Ukraine ran out of Patriot and Iris-T missiles all... Also, most other stocks or air defense means are depleted or destroyed. This while we have hundreds of systems and thousands of missiles in our depots. No words, just anger. So this is a picture of that uh, facility on fire. And this is a post from Zelensky. I found the actual post, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. We already saw video footage for that uh, fire here. So let's take a look at this. This is the post here that uh, Julian uh, Rapuk was putting there for us. So this is the actual post, the full length. So Vladimir Zelensky this is the president of Ukraine. Overnight, Russia fired more than 40 missiles and about 40 drones at Ukraine. I thank everyone who engaged in recovery efforts after the attack, as well as to every warrior of our air defense system who was on guard last night. Some missiles and Shahid drones were successfully dropped, uh, shot down. Unfortunately, only a part of them is what he said, a part. So generally, if you say a part, it probably would, would mean less than half. That's what I would think. Okay, it could mean more than that, but that's kind of how I see this is if they say a part, I'm thinking maybe a third were shot down or maybe even less. Russian terrorists have once again targeted critical infrastructure. Uh, there was another heinous missile attack on Kharkiv in the Kharkiv region. They also targeted objects in Kiev, Zaporizhia, Lviv, and Odessa regions. All of our European neighbors and other partners see Ukraine's critical need for air defense systems right now with our ability to overcome Russian terror. The world can demonstrate that all terror is treated equally as a, as a crime. However, if Russia is allowed to continue doing so, if Russian missiles and Shahid drones continue to strike not only Ukraine, but also resolve our allies, this will amount to a global license for terror. We need air defense systems and other defense assistance, not just turning a blind eye and having lengthy discussions. I am grateful to everyone in the world who truly supports Ukraine's struggle for life. 
I thank every leader who will not remain silent, who will continue to support us and condemn Russian terror. And then here's just a picture that he posted. Uh, this is a fire being put out, I'm assuming, at this uh, thermal power plant, it looks like. So, yeah, based on this message here, what this says to me, the fact that he says only a part of them were shot down, we were not hearing this so much before. We would hear that... Uh, you know, roughly like 75% or more would be taken down. That's what we would hear from Vladimir Zelensky. And now we're starting to hear only a part of them, at least in this particular attack. So is Ukraine running out of air defenses? Are they uh, running it, running so low to the point where they almost can't even shoot these down anymore based on this uh, post that we were reading back here? Very possible, okay? And I wanted to share that with you to show you how desperately... Ukraine needs air defenses right now, how desperately they need supplies in general, and how quickly Ukraine is falling apart when the U.S. is not supporting them in this fight, okay? So finally, I want to show you this video here, and we're going to go over this information. This is a uh, U.S. representative, Austin Scott, okay? He asked why when Russia bombs critical Ukrainian infrastructure, Ukraine should not attack Kremlin-controlled refineries. The answer from Assistant Secretary of Defense Celeste Wallander is because Ukraine must comply with high standards of warfare, which is part of European democracy. Meanwhile, today, due to Russian strikes, Ukraine lost its largest thermal power plant in Trapilia, which supplies 50% of electricity to Kiev's region and uh, other cr uh, critical infrastructure was attacked. So he's basically asking her, how come, Ukraine, how come there's a double standard here and that Ukraine is not allowed to uh, bomb uh, Russia's, you know, power plants and and uh, oil facilities, but yet it's okay for Russia to do that and destroy power plants and and uh, oil facilities inside of Ukraine. So let's take a look at this. Pretty crazy. I just want you to see this. The Biden administration came out and condemned the Ukrainians for hitting Russia's oil and gas infrastructure and and suggested that they should not do that again. Can you tell me why, uh, while Russia is attacking Ukrainians? Uh, oil and gas and energy sector. Why shouldn't the Ukrainians attack the Russian oil and gas and energy sector? The issue on attacking critical infrastructure is when those are civilian targets, we have concerns because Ukraine holds itself to the highest standards mm -hmm. of observing the laws of armed conflict, and that's one of the elements of being a European democracy. But, but the Russians are attacking the oil and gas infrastructure in Ukraine, cor correct? Absolutely. And if you're going to win a war, you can't sit back and take punches and not deliver punches. So why shouldn't the Ukrainians attack the oil and gas infrastructure in Russia? Congressman, we have concerns about striking at civilian targets uh, when we support uh, countries. Again, this is Ukraine's sovereign decision, but we express those concerns. But, but those oil and gas infrastructures in Russia are owned by the Kremlin, correct? It's not like they're owned by a private corporation that have shareholders and private assets are being destroyed. They are owned by private Russian citizens who are part of the Putin regime. That is correct. I mean, it makes sense to me that we should destroy them. Okay, so as you can see, I don't know, this video just kind of made me laugh. And uh, that's just a typical response there, like from the Biden administration. The, the way that they kind of play these games where they say, oh, Ukraine cannot target uh, Russian power plants or oil facilities or things like that, but it's okay for Russia to do the same. And really what I believe a lot of this has to do with is obviously money. It's money and, and uh, artificially suppressing the uh, oil prices for the U.S. And, and for countries around the world, but they're mainly only talking about European countries and the United States. So we do know that oil prices alone have gone up about $10 per barrel uh, in just the last few months, it was it was hovering around seventy to seventy five dollars a barrel for a while, and now as uh, last I checked, I think yesterday we were at like eighty five dollars a barrel. So obviously, the more that uh, Ukraine continues to strike Russian oil depots, this is going to hurt the world uh, in terms of uh, inflation and all these different things. That's what's causing oil to rise, and there's issues in the Middle East. So the U.S. is obviously concerned that there's going to be a major meltdown here in the oil in the oil market, um, and it could cause some major issues. So I think that's what this is really all about. She's obviously just deflecting there from the, from the real issue, and uh, again, it's just a double standard there. And it's to me, it doesn't make sense too. I have to agree with that uh, 
with that rep- that U.S. representative Austin Scott that uh, you know they they should be able to attack their oil facilities too, and especially if that's going to help put an end to this war. If that's what the war is basically about right now, it's mostly attacking energy. Ukraine should have the 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 right to do so as well. If that's what the war is about, okay. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think down below. But I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys get out of here. That's it for this update. So uh, Ukraine's Tripilia power plant completely destroyed. Another major hit to Ukraine. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Share your thoughts and concerns and opinions down below. If you got something out of this update, please smash that like button. And also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, I hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. We'll see you in the next one.